Good afternoon. This is Rich Nass, Executive Vice President of Open Systems Media and leader of the Embedded and IoT franchises. I'm here for this week's installment of Five Minutes With. This week, I'm speaking to Jeff Van Washenova, who is the Director of Automotive Market Segment for SEVA. Good afternoon, Jeff. Good afternoon, Rich. How are you doing? I'm doing great. I believe that you now hold the record for the longest name of any interviewee that I've done with these guys. <laughs> Yeah, that's that's pretty common. Uh, it, it's a long one. <laughs> Did you fit in those SAT boxes? I think I was. I think I probably ended at N. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> okay. All righty. Um, so Siva is um, in the DSP industry and has been for a while, and you're in the automotive segment. So I'd like to take this into the automotive realm. Um, and one of the things you guys do really well is vision, and that's one of the areas that's really growing in the automotive space with ATIS and all the things like that, particularly when you look at, like, backup cameras and blind spot detection and lane departure warnings, and I've seen that mirrors are now being replaced with displays. Um, what's next? Uh, have, have, have we, well, some of those things are, are still happening, obviously, but um, is there something on the horizon beyond some of the things that I just um, listed? Uh, well, I, I think we're kind of at, at, at just the beginning of seeing more and more cameras being added to the vehicle. Um, you know, uh, for the most part, uh, vision systems in, in cars have been a, a kind of a premium uh, uh, feature, and I think you're starting to see those perfectly into some of the low uh, to mid-volume vehicles, you know, you know, vehicles that really run uh, And just the beginning, um, I think they say you know anywhere in, in you know 2023 you could see upwards of you know six to eight vehicles or six to eight cameras uh, per vehicle. So it, we're, we're just kind of getting started with that. Okay, so now if you can excuse my cynicism for a second here, are these things that the consumers really want and need and are adding value to the car, or is it another feature to get people to buy the next generation of a car? Uh, you know, it's actually what's, what's pretty staggering is um, in 2015 we had I think an, an 8% increase in in vehicle uh, fatalities in the United States, and that was the, the highest increase in over I think 50 years. And then even in 2016 we've had another 6% increase, and so a lot of that can be attributed to things like you know distracted driving, uh, some of those things. So um, to have camera systems that can a- avoid uh, collisions or even you know monitor the driver to make sure that he's paying attention or he or she are paying attention to the road. Um, I'd have to say that um, you know the ability to, to save lives is is something that consumers are always looking uh, looking for when, you know when, when purchasing a vehicle. Okay, but obviously there's a cost involved with this, and from everybody's perspective, whether it's the car manufacturer, whether it's the insurance company, whether it's the consumer. Um, is there some point where it's not really worth the cost of adding these features and it's cool to have but not really worth it? Well, I, I mean, I think there's a lot of things that's, that's driving the, the amount of cameras and some of the features. I mean, if you every article that you, you know, every you know, you pick up a newspaper today, if people are still reading newspapers or look at a website, and there's you know one to two articles about uh, autonomous driving and uh, autonomy features, and uh, those features are I think uh, have a great benefit from a safety perspective, and then also uh, a great benefit for consumers in general. And they want some of these autonomy features, and uh, the camera systems are really uh, kind of the, the eyes behind these systems. And so, as consumers want you know more levels of autonomy and, and, and faster vehicles. Um, I, I tend to think that they'll they'll pay for a lot of these a lot of these features, and, and cameras are really kind of the enabling technology that's behind a lot of these different features. Okay, sounds good. So, what's the SIVA value add? What do you guys do better than your competitors? Yeah, well, you know, SIVA really really kind of uh, focuses on uh, high volume, low cost solutions, and so if you look at for autonomy, for example, um, you really need uh, robust algorithms and robust systems. And one way that you know uh, tier ones and OEMs are achieving these uh, robust systems by 
uh, moving from you know things like traditional vision algorithms and uh, implementing systems that are based uh, in artificial intelligence or, or deep learning. And a lot of these systems early on are developed in very expensive uh, GPU platforms. And so what SIVA does is, is SIVA is trying to uh, have a very efficient, low-cost solution such that you can get these robust systems into a cost point that you know can be put into uh, low to mid but high volume vehicles. So that's the that's uh, is is focusing on uh, you know efficient vision vision processing to to really hit the volumes for some of these features. Now I've heard lots of arguments over whether the compute should be all consolidated in, into one brain or if it should be distributed throughout the car. Where do you fit in, in, in that argument or discussion? Yeah, so we, 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 there's only a five-minute interview, so I don't know if we'll be able to, to, to agree on, on one solution, but I, but I think that's kind of the answer, too, is that there really isn't, isn't one solution. I think a lot of people think for a full autonomous vehicle, uh, maybe you want a centralized brain with, with dumb sensors, but uh, you know, the, the reality is, is that it's going to be quite some time that you know, those types of systems are, are widely uh, you know, deployed in the market. And so for the meantime, um, I think you're going to see probably a mix and match of, of smart sensors. Um, so I, you know, I think as far as scalability, if you, you know, for example, if you want to add a couple of features or functions to uh, you know, a, a mid-priced range vehicle, then the best way to do that is to, to kind of have the, to follow the, uh, the, the smart sensor model. So I think there's going to be smart sensors uh, in the market for, for, for quite some time. And e even once you go to a, a fully centralized system, there's a lot of data, so there's probably still the need to use uh, some smart filtering um, at, you know, at, the, at the central location. So it's going to be a mix and match, um, but uh, distributed systems are going to be around for, for quite some time, in my opinion. Very good. Uh, I'm afraid that we've used up our five minutes. Sure goes fast, doesn't it? It does. It does. Thank you. You're welcome. That was Jeff Van Washanova. He's the director of the automotive market segment for SIVA. And I am Rich Nass with Open Systems Media. Have a great day, Jeff. Thank you. You too. Thank you.